Hi, I'm Ines. I'm the co-founder of Explosion AI, one of the core developers of Spacey and the lead developer of Prodigy, a new tool for data collection and annotation powered by active learning. Prodigy helps data scientists and developers train and evaluate statistical models faster by putting the model in the loop. It's both a command line tool and a web application. Prodigy's main goal is to make annotation so efficient that data scientists can do it themselves and iterate on both the code and the data. In this video, I'll show you how to use Prodigy to train a classifier to detect disparaging or insulting comments. This type of task is especially relevant for online marketplaces or social media sites to flag abusive or disruptive behaviors. An example use case might be a warning pop-up before a potentially abusive message is sent, alerting the user that the tone seems inappropriate. This makes life easier for moderators because the sender cannot claim that they weren't warned. To train and evaluate the model, we'll use text from the Reddit comments corpus. Prodigy makes text classification particularly powerful because you can try out new ideas very quickly. The same approach can be used to solve problems such as sentiment analysis or chatbot intent detection. Before we start, a little content warning. This video will include various insults and with Reddit, we never know what we're gonna get. So this is potentially not safe for work or for kids. So the first thing we wanna do is bootstrap a terminology list to help Prodigy select the examples from our stream of Reddit comments. Of course, we could also just sit down and write like a long list of all insults we can think of, but we might as well use the word vectors to find terms similar to our C terms. So I just sat down and wrote down four insults that I could think of, and we're then gonna use those to find more similar terms and see what we can find in the word vectors. The first thing we do is add a data set to Prodigy. Here we're calling it insult seeds and give it a little description for future reference. Datasets can be used to bundle annotations together so we can later add to them, export them and use them within the tool. So now that we have a data set, we can actually use the terms.teach recipe um, to find similar terms based on our list of C terms. So we give it our data set ID, insult seeds, which is where we want to store um, the examples we're collecting. Um, and then we're giving it the EN vectors web LG model, which is um, the glove vectors packaged as a spacey model, which we can simply load in and use in Prodigy. And we give it a list of C terms in Sals TXT that we just looked, on, looked at earlier. And um, based on that, we're going to initialize Prodigy and spin up the web server so we can start annotating. So when we navigate to the browser, we can see the first examples pulled up. It's actually pretty good. Um, we're immediately in the right vector space. And now we can, act, we can click accept or reject, depending on whether we want to keep um, that term in our list of insults, whether we think it's relevant, whether we think it's an insult or not. So as you can see, a lot of them are actually, yep, insults. And we're also kind of in the porn wet vector space here. So there are a few that we have to reject because they're not actually insults. Yep, yep, no. Yeah. What's important to keep in mind when doing this is that this is not the final word on what's an insult and what isn't. We're simply saying, okay, if this word occurs, we kind of want to look at it in context and um, it's most likely part of a sentence that's insulting. So of course, um, in some cases, because of the nature of insults, we also have uh, terms that were reclaimed by the group they were originally supposed to insult. So we need to be careful here and actually look at these words in context because we don't want to falsely classify occurrences of words where people are actually um, using them themselves um, and not actually in an insulting context. But we can still put those words in our insults terminology list for now um, and then all we're doing here is telling Prodigy, okay, in the next step, when we're going to stream in examples, we want to see these words in context and make a decision on whether that occurrence of the word um, it was actually insulting. So we go through them here. It's actually pretty impressive what's in the glove vectors. <laughs> I did not expect it to know so many insults. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Also, we can always ignore a word if we're not sure if it's too ambiguous. There are a lot of um, words where we know it might bias um, the selection in the end. So we better just click ignore um, and skip it. We have, there's so many words in it, so it really doesn't matter if we skip one or two. And we can also see we already 
over 50 insults that we've, class we've labeled or selected for our terminology list. Yep. Yeah, and the idea here is because Prodigy's interface is very simple and focuses you on one decision at a time and also a binary decision, that we can move through these examples very fast. Um, and usually the rule of thumb is if you don't actually know um, a decision within two seconds, it's much better to just skip it and keep moving on than spending too much time on one single example that won't actually have so much of an impact. So here we're slowly getting to the occasional randoms. Yeah. It's actually quite fun to do this. You can also do this on a mobile phone, which I always enjoy because you can swipe through the examples. And actually that's type of simple interface you also know from Tinder was one of the inspirations um, for the tool because it also helps you be more focused because when you're annotating with Prodigy, um, you just want to move through the examples fast and you also want the quality to be good. So if it's actually intuitive and um, simple to use, you'll also get much better results even if you are asking external annotators to do the job for you. And as you can see, we've already accepted quite a few terms. And this is definitely much faster than it would have been if we sat down and tried to think of these random insults. Actually, there are actually a few in there that I didn't know who were. I wasn't immediately sure if that was an insult or not. But yeah, as I said, don't bother looking things up in Urban Dictionary. Just skip it. Yeah, but even from the words we're rejecting here, you can see there's a clear pattern here. Like we're in the right vector space and we're clearly getting um, to the point here. So now we're slowly at a point, I think, where it's getting a bit random and we've already collected over 50 terms we want to have. So we can simply go back to our terminal exit prodigy and, and we can see we've collected yeah 200 annotations, which we've added to our insult seeds data set. And now we can reuse that um, as a basis for our text classification training. So now to start, um, again, we're creating a new dataset, Insults, where we're going to be storing the training examples for our Insults classifier. And this dataset we'll then be using with a, a textcat.teach recipe. We give it um, the small English model in Spacey, which we've added the vectors to. That's important. If we've used the vectors to bootstrap, we also need the vectors in the model. And the model will also be used for tokenization, um, sentence boundary detection, if um, we're working with very long examples. So it's always important to use one here. And um, what we're loading in is the RC 2010, which is, I think, the December month of all Reddit comments from the Reddit dataset. Um, Prodigy comes with a built-in loader for the Reddit set, so you can get started straight away and simply use the loader argument with Reddit. And this will read in um, unzip um, the set and read in the individual comments. We built that in because we, we use that data set a lot and it's incredibly helpful for all kinds of tasks. So um, yeah, you can use that out of the box. And um, yeah, if you go to Google or probably in the video description, um, you'll find a link to download that set. Then we say, okay, the label we're assigning, which is very arbitrary, but in our case, we choose insults all in caps. That will be the label we're training and also the label that will then later be available in Spacey if we're using the model and um, uh, yeah, looking at the classification of a document. And we're giving it a seeds argument, which is our data set that we just collected, um, insult seeds. And then since it's a data set, Prodigy will read out all the terms we've accepted and use that as the base list to first suggest us examples actually containing our seed terms. Then as we go on, we will see more other random examples um, as the model learns more and um, suggests other examples that don't necessarily contain our C terms, but might also be insults. So now, as you can see, we're initializing it with 59 C terms, which is pretty good, especially after only a few minutes of work. And this will now spin up the web server and actually stream in examples from the Reddit set. Yeah, so let's see what we get here. Ah, someone complaining about parents these days and how they won't hit their kids. Okay, 
this one here. Yeah, see, that's a good example of um, paraphrased insults um, and people just talking about um, assholes in general and things they say. So that's a clear no. Mm, yeah, local newspaper is full of assholes. Nah. Long text in general, we, we're just going to skip here just for simplicity because, um, yeah, we kind of want to work um, with only medium length text. So we could have written a custom recipe up front to filter these out, but um, it's much quicker to just say, okay, if it's too long, if I can't be bothered reading all that, I'll just hit skip. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, Reddit. Yep, there we have a prime insult in the wild. Yes, we're definitely going to accept that. That's probably the type of stuff you would also want um, your insults classifier to detect. Yeah, here, I don't even know what to say about this. It's clearly, hopefully, um, ironic. Um, but yeah, that's probably something we want to ignore because yeah, the people is talking about insults while at the same time, ironically, insulting a group of people, whatever, like this is really not that relevant. Uh, you're the kind of judgmental prick, yeah. Um, yeah, that's like just paraphrasing insults. Again, here, this is people talking about insults, so um, we don't want to include that because we do want our classifier to learn that at least, okay, insults are directed at people. You know, if we don't, if we just wanted it to flag certain words, you might as well just search for keywords, but you know, that's the reason we're training this here. Um, the circle jerk. Yeah, we're getting, you're probably going to get a lot of circle jerk mentions because we have the word jerk in there. So we'll say no. Um, uh, nah. Oh my God. No. Nah. Yep. Yep. Uh, a lot of internal Reddit meta discussions about who's an asshole on Reddit and why and um, go derp in a commune faggot. Yep. That's Nah. Your friends are jerks. It's a bit tricky. In that case, we do um, say yes to it, even though in that context, it wasn't a pretty har a very harsh insult. But, um, you know, we do want our classifier to learn the pattern of like, okay, um, directing these words at a person or someone should be classified as an insult. And again, you know, the model we're training here, even in production, it will not, it's not supposed to have the last word on what's an insult and delete comments off your platform automatically. Like, no, we just want to have a good um, way of filtering out um, comments and texts that likely that are likely abusive or con contain insults. And um, that's only a first step. Of course, there are other um, things you might want to consider. Yeah, no, we're not, again, like it's, it's sometimes while, while doing these annotations, it's good to remind yourself that like, we're not, we're not training a bad words classifier. We are actually training an insults classifier, which means that even if we come across pretty terrible comments, um, we have to say no, because they're not actually an insult. Similarly to all kinds of shitty opinions that people on Reddit might have, but that, that's maybe for more, uh, something for a more general bullshit on the internet classifier that we can train in the next video. Mm, Lincoln was a scumbag. Hmm. Yeah, let's ignore this because it's technically an insult, but it's sort of going in the wrong direction here. And also when, you know, looking at these examples, also keep in mind that we're not actually looking at all the occurrences 
um, all the very clear occurrences of our terms. Prodigy is specifically picking out the ones where um, the prediction is close to 50-50, meaning that the ones that need our attention the most. So that can often mean that we're rejecting a lot more examples than we normally would. And it doesn't mean that um, vaguely insults like, oh, you're a fucking asshole are not in our data. It just means that we're not seeing them first because um, the model is already pretty confident based on our C terms and um, what we've annotated so far that these are clearly insults. So we're seeing the, more of the edge cases and the ones where we can basically have more, most of an impact with our decision by um, you know, producing a, um, a more relevant gradient for training than we otherwise would. So let's say if we have an example where our model is already 90% sure that it's an insult, all we get there is a 10% margin. On the other hand, if we get a 50, 51, um, then no matter what the decision is, we'll always have a gradient relevant for training. So that's the idea. And that's also what makes Prodigy more efficient or um, lets you actually go through this faster and collect more relevant training data. Um, so if you actually say, oh, um, what I want to do is I want to really annotate every or most instances of asshole in that data set and really decide is this an insult and have um, then end up with training data that really covers everything, then you should probably just stream in the data set directly, skip the model part, don't use the active learning component and really just annotate them um, as they come in. And here, All right, so let's speed this up a little. As you can see um, in the corner of the um, annotation card, um, there's a via seat um, meter key um, that's set to true at the moment. And this means that we are actually seeing um, examples that are based on the seat terms we've um, given Prodigy up front. So as we keep annotating, you can see here that actually um, we're leaving the via seat territory and the model is actually starting su to suggest its own um, predictions or examples um, that we should be classifying as an insult. So this is always a pretty important step in the annotation process. And again, keep in mind that, you know, we are only seeing the most relevant. We're not actually um, seeing all of the ones. And um, so even the ones we might be seeing here might um, just not necessarily be the most obvious ones containing an insult. So we can also see that very slowly we're getting um, into kind of random territory here again. So um, let's actually see um, how many annotations we've um, collected, store them in a database, and maybe try a different um, data set from our Reddit corpus, which is um, pretty huge. So now we're back in the terminal and we've saved all our annotations and now we can actually go back and um, do the same thing with a different data set so in this case just a different month of the reddit data that's a pretty nice feature of um, the data sets because you can just keep adding more annotations to them in the future um, at any point so we're doing exactly the same thing again and go back to our web app and annotate and yeah, we'll, again, we'll speed this up a little to go through more examples faster for this video. Um, but as you can see, we're getting very similar content. Um, start off with the via seed examples that actually contain our seed terms and then later move on to um, all the other examples um, that Prodigy then suggests based on the annotations we've collected so far. And as you can also see, the progress is moving up pretty quickly. So um, the progress bar is obviously just a rough indicator of um, how much we've annotated so far based on how confident the model is. Um, but it's usually a good estimate. So once this hits like the higher numbers, that's a good sign that you can stop and at least try um, run the first experiments and see how um, successful the annotations have been so far. So, yep, we're moving through the examples quickly, already over 50%. And again, we're also accepting a good amount of examples and only ignoring very few, which means we'll hopefully end up with pretty good um, training data for our first experiment. Yep. OK. 
Okay. More annotations. And yeah, now we've hit exactly 500 examples. So we're going back to um, our terminal, saving them. And I think now we're ready to train and see what we got there. Prodigy also comes with a bunch of very handy commands for training and experimenting. So in this case, we'll be using the textcat batch train command, um, put in our data set with the annotations we collected, pass in um, the name of a model we want to start with. So in our case, we're just going to be using the glove vectors and um, we'll also be defining an output directory, insults model, where um, Prodigy will later export the model to. Um, and in addition to that, we'll also define an eval split argument, which is the percentage of examples that will be split off for evaluation. So we could also create a separate evaluation set, which is definitely recommended if um, you want to uh, perform reliable experiments on the same data. But um, for quick experimenting, it's actually quite nice that we can just say, OK, Prodigy, keep 20% out of it, only train on the remaining examples. and um, at the end, we'll have a more or less accurate or reliable evaluation that gives us at least a rough idea of how well our model is performing. So in this case, yeah, we're starting off with our model and we're speeding up the training a bit, but even in general, it's very fast. And here we are doing 10 iterations with a batch size of 10. And at the end of it, um, Prodigy will not only show you the exact stats on how many times the model was right or wrong, how many examples were correct and incorrect. It will also give you the F-score accuracy and it will export the best model out of the entire run um, to the output directory we specified. So if we're, uh, if we're looking at um, the directory containing um, the model, this is a loadable spacey model that we can immediately plug in and test. It also contains a JSONL file of our evaluation and our training examples. So that means you can actually repeat the exact same experiment on the exact same data. Or you reuse the evaluation data, import it into a separate data set, and then use it in the future for your next experiments. So we can also look at the um, TextCat directory here, which contains um, the weights we've just trained. And as you can see, it's very compact, very small, and um, yeah, contains everything we need. So we can go ahead now and um, load up Spacey and see um, how our model performs on stuff we type in. So we first open a Python interpreter, import Spacey, and then simply call Spacey.load with the directory of our model. So in our case, just the directory insults model in our current working directory. So this is using the new version, Spacey 2, which is currently in alpha, but um, will be out as a stable release very soon. And um, it also comes with a few improvements to the loader, which easily just lets you load in any data from a Python package, but also from a directory. And now let's just type something in. This is pretty much the obvious one. And um, the categories are um, available at, as the doc.cats attribute, which is also new in Spacey 2. And we can see, yeah, it includes um, an insult key and um, our model thinks that, okay, this sentence is 99.5% likely to be an insult, which is in this case, correct. So let's just perform a little sanity check, which is always nice to um, make sure that, um, well, our model hasn't just learned that everything is an insult or everything direct, uh, directed at a person following your is an insult or something. So here in a positive case, this is actually looking really good because um, yeah, your lovely is only 2% or not even 2% likely to be an insult, which is again, correct or the result that we want. So let's, let's try some other phrases. Um, yeah, shut up Moran. Let's see. Ooh, okay, again, 99%. Well, this is based on one of our C terms that we've seen. So um, this is also looking very good. And now let's use one without any of the C terms. Um, here we can see, okay, that definitely 
um, might need some improvement or is also just a result of um, that phrase being slightly ambiguous. We'd actually have to decide whether we really want this phrase on its own to be classified as an insult or if this could just be some other expression that we don't even want our model to give a very high score to. And see here, this is actually pretty interesting because clearly based on um, the examples we've collected, um, our model hasn't actually learned um, much about self-deprecating insults. So um, yeah, if, even though in this, this phrase, I'm such an idiot, um, that's totally fine. And we usually probably don't want our classifier to learn that. We still get a very high insult score. So in this case, we actually know what types of um, training data we're looking for in particular to prevent these kinds of cases. So we could, for example, even use Spacey for that to collect a good set of examples, which we then annotate with Prodigy and feed into the model as training data. For example, you could use um, the rule-based matcher to explicitly find examples of our C terms, which we already have in our data set, and extract these examples, annotate them with Prodigy to make sure they're actually what we're looking for, and add um, these examples to the current insults data set, and then run um, the textcat batch train command again, and see if we're able to improve the accuracy of our model. So, in about one hour, we've gone from a brainstormed idea for a machine learning feature, an automated alert flagging potentially abusive comments or posts, to a working prototype. We did this by starting with just four C terms, bootstrapping a terminology list of over 50 more insults, and annotating 500 posts. We then used Prodigy to train and evaluate the model and export it for use in Spacey. Even with so few annotations, we saw that the classifier achieved 85% accuracy, which was enough to beat the baseline. From this quick experiment, we've seen that the feature we're interested in is probably feasible and might only take a week or two to build. To find out more about Prodigy, check out the examples and live demo on our website. We hope you enjoy it as much as we do, and we're looking forward to your feedback.